everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord.
the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a good day. It's a good day. Hallelujah. It's a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each and every one of us in here today, we should be up shouting, giving God praise this morning. Because he woke us up in our right mind. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God. How blessed it is to be able to come into the house of the Lord and give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your wonderful name this morning. Oh, we thank you this morning. My God, my God. I just give honor to the Lord. I thank and praise the Lord for all of you and for our viewers that are viewing online. We thank you for tuning in this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I bless the Lord for the shepherd of this house, Pastor Smith A. Atwater, and his lovely wife, Evangelist Marion Atwater. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says we're supposed to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Amen. So we're going to set the atmosphere today. We're not going to allow the devil to come in and steal what is just just taking place. The praises when they go up, the blessings of God come down. We don't really understand how much praise is really what it does for us. Some of us are clothed in praise. Hallelujah. Uh, you might not know what that means, and I don't have time to explain it to you, but go and look it up. When you have a garment of praise, hallelujah. Oh, we bless the Lord this morning. Ah, my, 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 my. Oh, my God. We're going to go before the throne of grace. You know, many of us, we've, we've gone through many things this week. When we come to church, we have to come expecting for God to do something in our lives. Not just show up just because we show up, but come expecting for God to move, to move in a mighty way. Hallelujah. You know, because when we saturate the atmosphere with praises, do you know what happens? When the man or woman of God get up here and begin to preach, it said the, the words of God just begin to flow like rivers of water and begin, we can drink from that. Hallelujah. And there's no hindrances. So when we praise the Lord, we set the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For Lord, truly you are worthy. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. And you're worthy of all glory. Oh, we bless your holy name this morning, Lord. We lift up holy hands to you, Lord. Oh, this is personal. I thank you this morning, Lord. I thank you that you woke me up this morning in my right mind. Hallelujah. With the mind that I can call upon your mighty name today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you put your light in me. But my light can shine forth into a dark world. Hallelujah. Because the days are evil. Oh, my God, my God. And it's time for the saints of God to rise up and do like God would have us to do. Because many of souls are being lost to the devil. But God will not be outnumbered and he will not be outdone because as long as I have breath in my body, I don't care what come or go. I'm going to do what the Lord would have me to do. And I pray that each and every one of you will do the same. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Lord, we thank you for raising up our helpers today. Helping us to carry what you have put in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you today for moving by your own power in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal, deliver, and set free today in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. We bless your holy name this morning. We ask that you would let a fresh anointing fall upon this place today. A fresh anointing, fresh oil to renew all of us. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God. Let the anointing flow. 
from mouth to mouth and breath to breath. In the mighty name of Jesus, thy will be done according to your word. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. In Jesus' name, we thank you. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Our scripture reading is coming from Philippians 3. 10 through 4, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Oh, don't let that die alone. Keep it right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads as such. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain until the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And we're going to have our praise team come back up along with our magnificent musicians. And you know, this is a time for everybody to participate. Not a time for us to sit down. Because God has done something for each and every one of us this morning. And we, we come to give him praise. We get, come to give him thanks and honor and glory. And once the t after the praise team, we're going to have the children go to the children's church. And then we're going to have our dynamic pastor come and present the word of God. Amen. Let's receive a praise team with a hearty amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's just call our hearts a master. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised on today. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised every day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hey. You see that in majesty. Oh God, you are, you are. You are the risen King. Let's say that again. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. Hallelujah. 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 I got I want to say something. I don't know when, when you come into the house of the God, I don't care what has happened before you got here or what you think is going to happen when you leave, but this is a place where you give God all the glory, honor and the praise. Amen. I'm going through all week. I can't wait to get here to give God the praise. Hallelujah. It's like I'm plugging in to my source. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I promise you. I promise you if you praise him. Yes. Hallelujah. If you praise him. Hallelujah. Yes. You'll feel better. Hallelujah. God will start moving things for you. Hallelujah. 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 You got to give him his praise. Hallelujah. You got to give him his praise.
children depart to children's church parents if you so desire for your children to go they may go at this time as we focus on how awesome our God really is blessed assurance I have the assurance of knowing that he is good all the day long why because when I sought the Lord he heard and he answered me and I have the answer to every situation, every circumstance. God is still in the blessing business. Come on, put your hands together if you know that God is still blessing. Amen. And while you're standing, let's go ahead and go to the throne of grace. We greet those who are viewing this live stream. Thank God for you tuning in. You have your own reasons for why you tune in to a church service. But God has a reason for you to hear his word. So we ask that you just relax and receive whatever the Lord has for you on today. So if you also would be so kind as to go to the throne of grace with us who are here in the worship area of the Unity Christian Church. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Some come with heavy hearts. Some come with questions. Some come with praises. Father, I praise you today for all the day long. You are still blessing us. So now we pray that you would take control of this atmosphere fresh. Let your holy word go forward and do what you're about to send it out to do. Father, as we yield our vessels afresh, we ask that you would take a full residence and do what only you can do. So Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray, and it is so. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Good morning. Come on, if you are happy about Jesus, say good morning. What a smile on your face. Amen. Yeah, we have some things that we are believing God to do. If you didn't, that means you'd already be in heaven. But because we are still here going through, we still know who has the victory right here and even more over that. But we are here today with a joyful heart. We are here today because whenever we think about the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Anybody here saved and know you're saved? I don't mean you're not sure. I mean, do you know that God has saved you? If so, you can just bless the Lord one time from the fruit of your lips. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a praise. Give him a thank you, Jesus. Give him a God, here I am, to do what you call. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So I greet you today in that name that is above every name. And it's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. And the praise team has already sang us happy. They sang us happy, amen. Why did they sing you happy? Because what they're doing, they're ministering. And when they minister through song, it just prepares the atmosphere for us to acknowledge how good God really is. How awesome our God really is. Seems like I can't move from there. God is good. If you know what I've been through, if I knew what you've been through 
and we put our praises together, yeah, there had to be some happiness going on in heaven somewhere. Because while God is still taking care of business, he's still commanding the enemy to cease and cease sin. I haven't got to my scripture yet. Amen. Thank God today. Thank God today. Amen. It may be gloomy on the outside, but there's sunshine in the room today. Let's read the word. If you'll be so kind as to keep that smile on your face. And let's go into the word of the Lord right now. Let's go into the book of Ephesians, and then we want to read one scripture from Romans, reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24, and Romans 6, 13, and we will be reading our scriptures today from the New Living Translation, the NLT Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, 22 through 24, and Romans 6 and 13. And if you don't have your Bible, it should be on the monitor here. Amen. The guys back there do a great job. Thank God for each and every one of you, each of you who are serving the Lord so diligently and faithfully. The word of the Lord says this, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Romans 6, 13. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. While you're standing and for those of you who are also viewing, would you please repeat after me our corporate prayer to put us on one accord and to beseech the Lord's favor in all of our lives. Please say, Lord Jesus, please prepare my ears to hear your word. Prepare my heart to receive your word. Prepare my eyes to see that your word is alive. And prepare my body to be your temple for the living word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We want to talk to you this morning from this topic. I want to talk to you about the changing room. I'm going to talk to you about the changing room. You might want to meddle a little bit today. Talk about what we're wearing, not on the outside, but on the inside. Yeah, you deal with the outside. You, mean, you get up, you ask God what to put on on the outside. But I want God to want to talk to us about what we're wearing on the inside. The garments that, amen, I heard somebody talk about the garments of righteousness, sister, evangelist, Sonia. But here we are today. Paul is dealing with a situation and a circumstance, and he's also a man of encouragement. Sometimes when we study the letters and the epistles from St. Paul, we only think about the things that he is trying to correct. And there's so much that needs to be corrected. But Paul is also a man of encouragement. God has a word of encouragement in his word. And so when we get into the word of God, we always ask him, Lord, what is it that you would have? 
for me as a rhema word, a personal word, something that you want me to settle in on and marinate on and meditate on and, and study all week long. So as we get into these scriptures today, I'm believing that God has something that he wants all of us to continue to focus on as we go through our journey of life. But we want to talk about a changing room. And when we hear the term changing room, what is a changing room? And some people also refer to it as a fitting room or a dressing room. And those terms sometimes can be uh, interchangeably, but they have a few nuances that can make them different. But just for the sake of what we are talking about, we're just going to lump them all together. So a changing room is a room or an area where people change clothes or try on clothes, uh, such as when you're in a department store. Changing clothes are provided in a semi-public situation to enable people to change clothes with varying degrees of privacy. If you are in the world uh, on a team in sports and you go into a locker room, that's a changing room. When you go, go into that locker room, you come in with your street clothes on. You're not really ready to go out and compete in whatever event that you're about to participate in. But when you finish, amen, changing into the clothes, then you become a part of a team. And you look around and everybody has on what? The same clothes. So when you go out, you believe that, amen, we're getting ready to pull and to fight for a common cause. We're going to participate in a way that we can draw strength one from the other. So, amen, in a semi-public environment, you can still go in and do a change of clothes from what you had when you walked in there. A changing room will have both an entrance and it's also equipped with mirrors. What good would a changing room or any room be if you couldn't get into it? So when you go to the changing room, there's going to be a way for you to enter into it, which means that there is an expectancy that you have a purpose for going in there. And when you, when you go in, if you don't have mirrors in there, then you really won't be able to get a good look at what you want to see. Because when you bring in clothes to try on, you want to see how does this hang on me. And I need to get an angle from the side. I need to get an angle from the rear. I need to get an angle from the back. Wherever your angle is that you want to get, you want to have enough different views so you can walk out of there confident that whether or not this is the garment that you want to take home or whether or not you want to put it back on the rack. See, when we go into God's changing room, there are some ways that we get in there. And the way that we get in there is through the veil of Jesus Christ. He, he has uh, eliminated every physical veil, everything that Satan tries to put in you, and he becomes the opening. He becomes the way now for us to get into a changing room. Why do we need to go into a changing room? Because we need to be transformed. We need to have some things dropped off of us. We need to have some things forgiven that we're still lugging around. Every day we get up and we pick up the same mess. Oh, I'm going to leave this at home. And before you know it, when you're driving in your car, your mind goes back to the same thing. And you're carrying that same weight with you wherever you go. You got to get into the changing room. You got to get in there and let God begin to do some things so that when you finish looking at yourself in the changing room, you realize that you are not the same as you were when you walked in there. Let's go into the scriptures here just for a minute. Uh, Ephesians 4. Let me read verse 17. Ephesians 4, 17. Now, this is Paul. Paul, Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus, but he's also talking to the church today. Ephesians 4, 17 says, with the Lord's authority, Paul said, this is not coming from me. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. What he's saying is that when the Gentiles are the non-believers, amen, anybody that's not a spiritual Jew, you are considered to be a spiritual Gentile. You are a non-believer. So for the sake of what Paul is talking about, he's talking about those who are not followers of Jesus Christ. And he said, for those who really have not been blessed with the true knowledge of who Jesus is and who began to receive the things that he came to do for us, then we are walking uh, uh, as Gentiles walk in a state of confusion. 
Some of the scriptures, some of the translations say they are walking with a feudal mind. Whatever they try to accomplish is futile because they're not doing it according for God's purpose and in the way that God wants it to be done. So anything that we try to do to elevate and pump up ourselves or even somebody else, if we're not trying to do whatever we do for the sake of our God, then all of our labors are going to be in vain. They're going to be futile. And so Paul says uh, the Gentiles, the non-unbelievers are living a life and they're walking in hopeless confusion. And then let's go down to verse 20, Ephesians 4 and 20. He says, but that isn't what you learn about Christ. He, he uses the word learn, which means there are, there are some things that we must uh, uncover, discover about Jesus. There are some things that Jesus wants us to glean about who he is. And when we all have a relationship with him or get into this word of God, we begin to learn some things about Jesus, which means you got to spend time with Jesus in order to have confidence that you now understand who he is and what he really wants you to do. So he said, that isn't what you learned about Christ. So he's, he's talking to the church. He's saying you have already learned some things about Jesus. If you have not learned something about Jesus, then you fall under the category of the Gentile or the unbeliever who has not yielded yourself to receive what God wants to teach us. Verse 21, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off, put off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Now, this is the opening scripture that we read. Take off some stuff. You need a change of clothes. If you've been walking around with that as your understanding about who you are and what you're supposed to do, and you've been controlled by your old sinful nature and your, the way you used to live, which has been corrupted by a lustful spirit and a deceptive demon, you need to get rid of that. You need to find something different that will no longer allow you to dress yourself with those terrible, damnable things every day of your life. And you can get rid of it when you receive a different clothes. Put on the new man. See, the old man is the one who likes to continue being drunk through the mud. The Bible says that old man must die. And if he's dead, you can't put him on. You're going to be lugging them around. You're lugging around a corpse. And the Bible said, we are dead in Christ. And then if you died in Christ, then you were raised in Christ. So now you are alive in Christ because the old man is dead. His clothes have been removed and you have taken on a new nature. Now you have clothed yourself with somebody and something different. Now you have Jesus that wrapped him, his arms around you. And Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit. So if we have the Spirit of God, now he wants to control us he wants to be the garment of praise the garment of blessing the garment of righteousness that only we can glean from him so the bible says in verse 23 ephesians 4 23 instead of uh, corrupting yourself by lust now let me say that thing about lust sometimes people only think about fleshly lust physical lust but when people lust after things it's not all about trying to have a physical connection. It's spiritual that you are beginning to lust after things that God is telling you to stay away from. When you lust after it, it means you really say, I got to have it. I want that. What is it going to take for me to get that? And God is saying, move and remove yourself. From that whole position, take that off of you. Get that out of your mind. Eliminate from your, that from your thought process and begin to understand what I'm saying in verse 23. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. problem that we have is that we will not allow the Spirit to really do a renovation project inside of our minds. We protect our minds, our thought process, and we rationalize why it's okay for us to think like that. Why it's okay for us to gossip. 
Why is it okay for us to have malicious anger? Why is it okay for us to think, well, I can get, uh, uh, I'm, I'm angry, so I'm going to get some revenge, and I don't care what my witness look like when I do it. I'm going to feed my flesh because I have to do it because I'm lusting after myself. When you lust after yourself, you're going to do the things of self. But when you yield yourself to the Lord, you're going to follow after the spirit of God. See, it does not mean that you will not sin. Well, let me go to Romans 6.13. Let me go to Romans 6.13. How many? Okay. Go to Romans 6.13. Everybody with me? Romans 6.13. Romans 6.13. Now, we, we put off the old man, and, and we're putting on the new man. And Paul is telling us to put on this new set of clothes. We got to change ourselves. We got to get into the right environment. We got to go into the changing room and present ourselves to Jesus so that that old life will now be dead and we become a new creation. And then he said, now, when you do all of that, when you put on this new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and, and holiness, this, this new man is not a man who's going to bring a lot of mess to the table. This new man is going to bring holiness and righteousness. And when you do that, Romans 6.13, Romans 6.11, go to 6.11, 6.11, Josh. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin. How many know this uh, sin has power? If you think sin don't have power, why is so much sin in the world? Why are so many people subject to the influence and the affection that they get through sinful natures? If you think sin don't have power, then wouldn't everybody just do everything that's right all the time? When you make right decisions all the time, if sin doesn't have any power, it, and now, now power don't mean, amen, it's just going to always slap you upside the head. It's clever. It's, this, it's a deceiver. It can be a deceptive thing that will put in front of you. But anything that controls you has power over you. So the Bible says, so you also should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin. Now look, it said consider yourself. It didn't say that you will not still have a sin for nature. See, until we go back to be with the Lord, we still will have a sin for nature. The nature will have a, 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 an inclination to do wrong for thing. But then Paul said, consider yourself dead to the power of sin. Don't mean the sin not going to try to come, but it don't have power over you anymore. As long as you have completely become a new creation and taken off the old clothes and become the new man and clothed yourself with holiness and righteousness of God. How do you know that you have clothed yourself with the holiness and righteousness of God? Do an inventory. So the last time that you had that test, did you pass it? Or did you say, oh, man, I should have done it. Next time, I'm, I'm going to do better. Did your thoughts wander a little too long about a dirty joke that you heard? Did you hang on to it and repeat it and, 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 and try to make people laugh about things that you know that if God heard you telling that joke, you would run and hide somewhere? See, it's not about who's looking at you. It's who are you and who are you looking at. Because if you're always looking at heaven, you're always looking at Jesus, then you're going to want to do the thing. You're going to want to speak the thing. You're going to want to walk to the right places and, and, and lie down in the right locations. You, you're going to want to be the right vessel that's going to say, I am now a new creation, so my witness is going to be effective for the glory of God, and I'm not going to be the one who's going to fool and confuse somebody because when they hear me going, holla, robber, hobba, dabba, da, hobba, da, dabba, da, and I'm speaking on Sunday, and then on Monday, I'm just as jacked up as a squirrel. Get something new today, said the man. Romans 6, 12 said, do not let sin control the way you live. Bottom line right there. What's controlling you? What's controlling you? Do not let sin control control or have dominion or have dominance over who you are. How can you put sin under your feet? You're going to look at it with those big beautiful eyeballs that God has blessed us with and say, get away from me. Now you got to say in the name of Jesus, you have no authority here. 
I don't belong to you anymore. Now, it used to be you could fool me with that stuff. But since I gave my life to Jesus and I determined I was not playing church, I wasn't playing with the, the Lord, I'm sincerely and gave him my whole body. I'm not trying to run games on anybody because God lives and knows my heart. Then why in the world would I try to fool God? So the Bible says in Romans uh, 6 and 12, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desire. Now you should see what he said. He didn't say sinful desire wasn't going to come. He said do not what? Give in to sinful desire. So what does that mean? It means when it comes, you plead the blood and say, no, Lord, give me the strength to say no. This, this thing is really attractive to me right now. My flesh is weak. But, Father, I know if I do this, I have not really clothed myself. I had not really spent enough time in the changing room. There are some things I, I'm still holding on to. I got some garments that I still need to take off and change. I, I still got some dirty garments on, God. I, I need to go through the Holy Ghost cleansing process all over again. But, Father, I recognize him when he comes. So, please, do not let anything like that control me. And finally, verse, th verse 13, he said, do not let any part of your body become an instrument or a weapon of evil. Now, what does he say? He said, any part of your body. What are the parts of our body? You, well, you got eyes. You have ears. You got uh, hands. You got a mind. You got lips. Anything that's a part of your body, Satan wants to use something on your body for the sake of evil. And anything that's used for evil is referred to as a weapon for evil. God wants all of our instruments to be used for weapons of righteousness. See, anything that you use, when you go into a battle and the two forces come up with weapons, normally the force that has the strong his weapon is going to win. And so when God said, don't use your body, the instruments, what he has blessed us with in our natural body for evil, he says, use it for righteousness sake. Use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. What are we talking about? Let me give you a quick example here before we bring this to a conclusion. Look at David. God used David's hands to kill Goliath. But then David used his eyes to lust after Bathsheba. So he sinned with his eyes in that instance, but he was victorious for God with another one of his instruments. God said, use all of your body for instruments of righteousness. So God, whatever my eyes see, let me process it right. Don't let me process it in a way that it's going to lead me to a harmful conclusion. Whatever my hands, God, touch, let them touch the things that's holy unto you. Whatever, wherever my feet go, God, direct my feet to the right places where I should be. Don't let me be found in a place where I should not be. See, in the Old Testament, in Exodus 20, verse 19 and 20, look at what God said. Exodus 29, I'm sorry, Exodus 29, verse 19 and 20. The Bible says, now take the other ram and have Aaron and his sons lay their hands on his head. Verse 20, then slaughter it and apply some of the blood to the right earlobes of Aaron and his sons. And also put it on the thumbs of their right hands and the big toes of their right feet and splatter the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar. What is God saying? Everything that belongs to you, everything that God has given to you, be it your ears, be it your thumb on your hand or your big toe on your foot, everything that you have, it should now be dedicated and used by God. So when God says, when you consecrate yourself, he don't just want your word. He wants you to come in through the entrance way, which is Jesus the Christ. And when you get in there, he wants you to look in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, he wants you to be real about what you see. When you might choose the wrong type of garment to put on our bodies, but our bodies don't look like they did now. 
when we were 25 years old. So you can't put on the same type of garment that you put on when you were 25. You got to look at yourself now and say, this don't fit me right. You got to look at Satan and say, Satan, the thing that you used to get me to do when I was 20 years old, that don't fit me right no more. <laughs> I don't wear that garment no more. Let me show you my garment now. My garment is a garment of righteousness. When you tell me to do that, you tell me to lie, you tell me to cheat, you tell me to steal, I say, no way, Jose. I belong to Jesus and him alone in this changing room. I took off the stuff that I should no longer wear, and I put on the stuff that God had laid out for me. He had already chosen the garments. He gave you certain gifts. He gave you certain talents. And what he gave you, he wants you to use it for his glory and his glory alone. Anybody try to take the giftedness that God has given to you and try to pump air into it to make a spirit of pride rise up in you? You got to change your clothes real quick. This is not, this, this don't fit me, God. This does not fit me. What I want them to see is not me. I want them to see you. I want the garment that's going to reflect everything up to you. And I want to be real in my life. When you come out of the changing room, you should come out saying, this is what I'm taking home with me. This fits real good. Father, I thank you for revealing this. I thank you for showing me the change. I thank you for letting me know that I'm not the same old man that I was. Father, I am different. I can't even be comfortable doing the same thing, thinking the same way, wanting to do the same thing. And if I can, then that really let me know I need to go back to the changing room. Anybody here need to go to the changing room? Anybody ever been in the changing room? Eh, we need to go back. We need to not lose the lock, the key to the lock because the door is always open. We always need to spend time in the changing room. In fact, if you don't ever go in there, then you're walking in a spirit of pride. You're saying, I don't need nothing now. I'm perfect in all my ways. And God said, all have sinned, come short of his glory. No, there's none that's righteous. No, not one. We all need the blood of Jesus Christ. We all need him to keep control of our instruments so that we can live a righteous life. All eyes closed, heads bowed. If you're here today, you're not saved, and you know that you need help. Sin is still operating as your, your Lord. He has, it has dominion over you. But see, the word of God lets us know that sin, when, when it said that sin shall not have dominion over us, it means it's a test for us as a Christian. When we really look at our lives and we ask ourselves, does is sin really controlling me? And, is anger really controlling me? Is complaining really controlling me? Is covetousness really controlling me? If so, then that part still has dominion over me. But it's also a promise of, of victory because God says to the believer that sin shall not have dominion over you. It means we will be victorious over sin. And then we are encouraged to know that when sin comes, we have hope and strength in the fight against sin. If you are not saved and you desire to give your life to the Lord Jesus because none of this is possible without us yielding our vessels to the Lord and we can reason ourselves into a mess. But we got to be real and ask Jesus for his direction today. Father, this sin, is it keeps me going in places where I don't feel comfortable in my soul but I just want I don't want to disappoint people so I find myself going and doing things that I'm not pleased with and I don't feel peace when I do it if you desire to give your life to the Lord today where you can find the victory in Jesus Christ if you're viewing this live stream why don't you stand right where you are we're going to pray this prayer of salvation and repentance. If you are in the house today and you are not saved, this is for those who are not saved. 
and you desire to give your life to Jesus so you can be positioned to walk in victory and not in defeat to claim your victory to lay down those old garments and put on the new stand right where you are we're going to pray this prayer amen and when you stand begin to just lift up your heart to the Lord today and then just say Lord Jesus please forgive me for all of my sins whatever is wrong I will no longer do whatever is right that will I do I thank you Jesus for dying for me I thank you Jesus for being resurrected for me so that whenever I do come up a little short in my walk and I pray and repent in your name I know that I am forgiven so come into my heart now be my Lord and my Savior I thank you Jesus for saving me for I am saved in Jesus name amen 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 if you prayed that prayer and you meant what you prayed you are saved yesterday is gone today is here tomorrow is before you we walk in victory and not in defeat in Jesus name we are new creation our minds have been renewed our soul have been made new our glory and now, and now, and now, if there's anybody here who needs to go into the changing room just for a little bit, we need to go in there and ask God to take control of some of the things that keeps attaching itself. We want to get rid of anger. We want to get rid of that spirit of envy and jealousy and gossiping and slandering all of those things that we know that's not pleasing to God take control of that lustful spirit that keeps trying to attach itself to us if you want to go into the changing room with me we're getting ready to pray and when we go in there we're not coming out like we went in so if there's anybody that desires to pray stand right where you are for those of you who are viewing this is our closing prayer we're going to do some things here but for those of you who are viewing this is our closing prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank God. We are real today, God. We are not playing church. We come to you saying, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I present out my vessel to you, God. I present all that I am, every one of my instruments that you have blessed me with. I present it and give it back to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We stand before your throne. We stand before your presence as humble as we know how. Not trying to cover up wrongdoing. Not trying to make excuses for thoughts that we should not have covered on. For things that we should not have thought about. For going places we should not have gone. For doing things we should not have done. We're not making excuses, but we're asking you to forgive us. We're asking you to cover us up. We're asking you to give us more strength. Give us more anointing. Give us more of your love. Give us more of your grace. Give us more of your peace. And most of all, God, come into our life and be that everlasting, ever-present hope that we need. Whenever we call you, let us know that you're already answering us even before we call because we belong to you. We are your children and we walk in victory and not in defeat. So, Father, hear our cry. Everyone that's in the changing room, Present something up to God right now. Take off something. See yourself taking off something. See yourself removing something that you shouldn't carry around. And see yourself reaching down and picking up a new garment and stepping into it. And now you are a new creation. Now you are a new child. Now you are a new one who walk worthy of the vocation where Christ has already set us free. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the love, the joy, the peace. Your glory is manifested in your house. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and the honor and the glory. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. We go in peace and we sin no more. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise the Lord.